Uh, so we can start at the, with the second half of this meetup. So first of all, thank you very much, Tim, for the introduction to uh, Apache Pinot. Um, what I'm going to showcase now is uh, actually uh, first I want to start by saying that what got me interested in Apache Pinot is actually um, something very different. It's called Third Eye, if you've heard of it. It's actually a anomaly detection platform provided by Startree. It's not open source, it's a community license, meaning you can't sell it as a service. But this was actually after being at a company, at a company, and we had issues with anomaly detection. And through pure research, I actually found this uh, service or server. And I started working with it. Uh, quite nice. I actually also have, uh, you can find me on YouTube, I have a lecture in Hebrew on the uh, on Third Eye. Uh, What's your name? <laughs> coming to that in a second. <laughs> um, so that's how I got into Apache Pinot. So my name is Yoav Nobman. I work at uh, Tikal for uh, over seven years. I'm a group leader uh, at Tikal, meaning I'm a mentor for other people at Tikal. Um, uh, at the company, we actually go out and we work at clients. Um, so at the clients, I usually work as tech lead and architect in distributed systems and also as in data. Um, currently, I'm actually doing a POC for the current client in uh, Apache Pinot, uh, something, some very interesting stuff. But that's besides the point. Tim, before he said, OK, Apache Pinot is for streaming analytics, right? So what we're going to do now, and may the gods of demo have mercy on my soul and help us. A uh, little prayer uh, will definitely help. Uh, we're going to run. I have here running on my screen a local um, a Kubernetes running, uh, K3S, whoever knows. And uh, this is K9S, so this is going to show us whatever is happening within my Kubernetes server on my laptop. And I'm going to run a... Uh, streaming ingestion on this laptop. So I'm going to show you the whole thing from beginning to end. First, we're going to um, uh, install or create, um, uh, using a Helm chart, we're going to install Apache Pinot. Then we're going to install Kafka. And we're going to uh, finish it up with uh, Superset, Apache Superset, so we can actually see what's going on. Um, afterwards, I'm going to stream the metrics from my computer using Teledog. I'm going to stream those into Kafka. So the CPU, memory, and sysinfo, I'm going to stream that in real time. We're going to see it ingested into, into Apache Pinot. And then we're going to finish off and see this in real time in Apache Superset. All of this within the next half hour. Um, I hope you're as excited as I am. Uh, this is definitely cool stuff. But that's uh, very subjective. OK. So uh, as you can see at the moment, um, this is uh, whenever you start K3S, or um, uh, this is what you end up with, uh, a couple of uh, services running. And the first thing we're going to do is actually we are going to add Apache Pinot. So if you want to add Apache Pinot, first of all, you have to add the um, repo, right? the Helm chart repo to your computer, which I already did. And I also already created a namespace um, uh, called Pino, and we can see this. So this is my namespace. It's empty. Namespace Pino, empty, and we're going to load everything in here. Okay, so let's start. First, I'm going to start with Pino Helm chart. Um, I'm setting the cluster name to uh, incredible naming Pino, and I'm going to say, OK, only one replica account, because we only need one replica account at the moment. Let's go and run this. Um, OK, we can see. Let's go to the Pnote namespace. We can see that everything is um, container creating and already running. That's because I ran it before. So I actually have all my images already local on my computer. It takes a couple of seconds to start up. Um, we can always see what's going on. OK, there is uh, no connection at the moment. Uh, we can see what's going on in the log file. Of course, uh, Zookeeper, as usual, until it's up and everything is running. OK, let's wait for it to start. In the meantime, I can actually go and look at the service. 
So um, we are talking about this service. Um, it's running on port 9000. Okay, so we're going to try and access it and see what Pino actually looks like. Let's go to the browser. And this is Apache Pino. Nice to meet. This is uh, what you see first when you start up. So as um, uh, Tim said before, we have our controller. This is the controller. You can go inside. You can see some um, some configuration issues. It's very basic. Okay. Um, we have our broker again. Very basic stuff. Um, what we are interested in is the tables, of course, and this is of course empty. First of all, I'd like to point out um, Apache Pinot is, has multi-tenancy as a first-class citizen. So you can have different tenants, and the data will be stored by tenants. Okay, And you can have different servers with different data for different tenants. And even in the deep storage, you can have it being saved on different, uh, in different buckets, stuff like that. Really cool stuff. Uh, minions, I'm um, not going to talk about it too much, but those are internal... Um, uh, internal services which can do the heavy loading, heavy lifting. Okay, uh, we're not going to get into that too much. Okay, so uh, we have Apache Pinot running. Uh, we need some more stuff, right? We said we need uh, Kafka and we need Superset. So let's go and do Kafka. Um, using I'm using the Strimzi operator. Strimzi is a uh, basically a production grade. Kafka operator for Kubernetes, so I'm using that. So again, here first you add the Helm chart repository, and then you're adding the Strimzi um, uh, operator to your uh, Kubernetes, and I'm telling it to watch the namespace Pino. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, again, this is already up. Now, please notice we can't see here anything because the operator is in a different namespace. It's in the default namespace. I don't need it in my Pinot namespace, right? Let's go back to the Pinot namespace. This is still what I'm running. I have only my Apache Pinot here. Let's go and run a Kubernetes, cl a Kafka cluster. Okay, so I have, um, this cluster which I'm running. As you can see, this is a Kafka cluster, right? I'm using the Strimzi operator, so I have a Kafka deployment running version 3.4. Um, yeah, there's not much to see. Everything which I'm doing will be published in a Medium article um, later uh, this week. Okay, so let's run my Kafka cluster, and I'm running the Kafka cluster in the Pinot namespace. So here we have our Kafka cluster coming up. First, we have Zookeeper coming up, right? Kafka needs Zookeeper. Uh, well, actually, not anymore, but still, uh, so it, it's pretty basic. I didn't work too much on that. So we have Kafka cluster Zookeeper running, and in a second, we'll see also a Kafka machine coming up. In a second, we'll continue uh, further with our installations. Next, we need, as I said, we need Superset. Apache Superset, whoever doesn't know, is a front end for analytics. It's dashboarding, basically, right? So it's basically like a, um, a Tableau or uh, any of those systems. Again, we have our repository, uh, Helm chart repository, which we need to um, add to our computer. And then we're just going to install the Helm chart again. Um, pretty basic stuff. We add this Superset. Now, there is one special feature here, which I'm going to show you. So I'm using the superset values file. So superset knows to interact with lots of databases, but sometimes it needs the library to be able to work with that database, and Pino is one of them. So using this Helm chart, and there is a great bootstrap script using the Helm chart, I can just add the Pino DB. Um, Python um, uh, driver and everything will work and I'll show that again. So this is my values file. This is the only change which I added. So let's run the uh, uh, superset. Okay, 
In the meantime, you can see that my Kafka cluster is already up. So I have Kafka running here. And now Superset is coming up again. It is coming up as well. So all of this, in the meantime, running on my Kubernetes cluster on my laptop. Um, given this is a Lenovo with a Ryzen processor, so uh, if you have a Mac, this might not work. But uh, yeah, on Linux with a Zen kernel, no problem at all. OK. Heard that shade. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go and visit our um, uh, superset. Right? So we saw Apache Pinot. Let's go and visit superset. So for that, I need to do a, uh, actually, you know what? Let's go to our service and let's see um, superset. And uh, I think that would be this. Uh, it didn't come up yet. Let's see, still initializing. Let's see, okay, waiting for Postgres. So this sometimes takes a little time. Let's try to speed stuff up. Okay, we'll continue. This will come up in a second, no problem at all. And then we'll visit, oh, here it is. Um, now it's running. So let's go and check out the service. And uh, let's go visit superset. Still not up there. Okay, let's do a port forward. And uh, we'll see it running. So I'm doing a simple port forward where I can see then go to localhost 8088. And that should do the trick. Okay, and let's go to our browser and open localhost 8088. And this is Apache Superset. As you can see, it's empty, right? We don't have anything here yet. Um, not even in the recents because I actually deleted all my cache just to show you. So this is everything is empty. At the end of this, hopefully within 10 minutes, we're going to see here some analytics. Okay, so now we have Apache Pinot, we have Kafka, we have, um, uh, we have Superset. What we need to do now, first of all, is start streaming some data to Kafka, right? So let's start streaming data. Uh, for that, I'm going to use Telegraph. Um, for those who don't know Telegraph, it's actually a, by pro it's a product of uh, InfluxDB, the company. Um, it sits on your machine. It has various ways of ingesting data or actually um, uh, exporting data. You can tell it to have data come from different places and being um, uh, sent to diff other places. So there is a configuration file. As you can see, I'm running everything. You will see everything which I'm doing with Telegraph. All of the data which I'm outputting is also being outputted also to the file to STD out, so we'll see it on screen, and also to Kafka. And this is my Kafka, okay? I'm actually sending the input plugins, that's how Telegraph works, I'm sending the CPU metrics, memory metrics, and the system metrics, all of this to either Kafka or to the, um, just to the output on the screen so we can see. Um, okay, so let's do that. Okay, so Telegraph is a binary which needs to be downloaded so you can run it. And this is how I'm running it. I already have everything in place. Great, so in a second you, we will see here on the screen we'll see whatever metric I'm sending. Again, I'm sending it also as STD out. As you, you can see, the flush interval is every five seconds. I'm sending it also to STD out and also to Kafka. So this is what I'm sending, basically. OK? Pretty basic metrics, right? We have the fields. Um, this is the system. Um, here we have some data on CPU and 
usage soft IRQ and usage nice and lots of information, okay? So this is the data I want to see in Apache Pinot, right? In real time ingest. So let's do that. In order for us to see this in Apache Pinot, again, I'm already sending it to Kafka. And again, by the mercy of the gods of demo, it is actually being sent to Apache Kafka. I didn't see any errors, so uh, I believe it is. Now let's do the ingestion on the side of Pinot. For this, we need two things. We need our schema. Let's do the CPU, okay? So we have here a schema. This is what it looks like. So um, I prepared, of course, and I know what the CPU metrics look like, right? So I configured the schema, which needs to be integrated into Apache Pinot. So I have the name, the host, and the CPU, right? I think we saw that before on the STD out. And we have lots of metrics, right? They're most of them, they're floating point uh, um, numbers. And then at the end, we have the date, time, field, spec in milliseconds, okay? This is how you define a schema in Apache Pinot. Now there's a very simple way to actually upload this um, uh, to uh, Apache Pinot. So first let's go and see Apache Pinot. Again, I'm going to tables and this is empty, but as you can see, I have schemas and tables. So if I go to add schema, this is what I get and I could add this here one by one. I'm not gonna do this because this is gonna take some time. So I'm just gonna send it to Pinot, nice feature. And I'm gonna use a curl. Okay, so here I'm sending a curl to my Apache Pinot. And I'm sending it to the endpoint of schemas. Okay, I think I didn't do port forwarding for um, Apache Pinot, that's why it's not gonna work now. So let's see, let's do a port forward for Apache Pinot as well, right? Um, okay, so we do service, let's do this whole thing. That would be service Pinot controller and we're doing this on 9,000. Okay, so let's do the port forwarding and that should fix us using localhost. Okay, I was right. Great, next let's do, so let's try this again. Great, okay, so we uploaded the schema to Apache Pino. Let's see that, right, here we go. Okay, we have our schema. And we can go inside and we can see whatever we have. And we can see it also in a nicer view here on the right hand side. There's some more information in here, but basically that's our schema. Now, the next thing we need, we have our schema, right? Now, as Tim said, we need our table, right? So let's see, um, let's look at the table. So CPU table config, this is what it looks like. And this is very interesting here in Apache Pinot. So I'm, first of all, I'm saying the table time is real time, right? And this is the tenant. Again, multi-tenancy as a first class citizen. Next, we have the segment, segment config. So I'm using um, schema name, okay? Look at all these indexes which you can apply to any one of the columns, okay? This is very, very Pinot, lots of indexes. In here, I'm giving the streaming config. I'm telling it to get the data from Kafka. Okay, whatever Tim said, and this can be elaborated even more. So you have lots of options here, flush size and everything. Now, what I'm doing, I'm doing a transformation. My telegraph is exporting the data as a JSON. Now, the JSON has an internal structure. It has an internal JSON, but I want to flatten the whole thing. This is especially useful if you know your structure to begin with. At my current client, the problem is that we get JSON objects, which we have no idea what's inside. So I'm using the JSON index. But in this case, I know exactly what's in there. So I'm flattening, actually, my JSON. So this is what it looks like. 
And there's uh, other stuff. So I'm taking this and let's go to the table, at real time table. Okay, again, you have here a UI. You can add all of your stuff, everything you've seen, actually use this to generate um, that uh, um, JSON file. I'm just gonna paste it in here. At, on the right side, as soon as I pasted it, it knows to correlate it to the schema. So let's save this. And now, this is where the magic happens. Please. Schema is just the specification of the input, how the input Schema looks. is the specification of the table uh, of, the, uh, um, uh, of the columns which you have in the table. In the output table. So you have also a schema and separately you define a table. Yes, but the, so the table you define has to adhere to the schema which you described before. In, in the schema you actually say, okay, what data points you have, whether it's a flow or a uh, integer or a string or whatever, okay, pretty basic. In the table configuration, you're saying, okay, it has to adhere, you're not gonna state what information comes in. You're just gonna add the index in, okay? Make sense? So actually you can have like several table based on the same schema? I think so. Tim, do you want to join in on that? You can have different Tables I on also, the same schema. I also think so. I haven't actually done that. Okay. Yeah. So it, um, basically, I think you could do that uh, with different tenants, right? If you have the same schema, but you have different tenants, and each one has its own has, uh, they they have their own table, for instance. So yeah, yeah that, that's basically. It's yeah. fine. There's not. You could specify the same schema configuration. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Okay. So that's the idea. So um, uh, let's go and see if we have some data. So we go to Query Console. Here we have the tables, and by God, we do have some data, okay? Yes. This is real time ingestion. Yes. So this was the hard part, right? Because the connection to Kafka, you never know with all the uh, different connections in Kubernetes. Okay, so um, again, uh, flush time is five seconds, so whenever I go and I run the query, um, please notice, oh, let's um, size this up, so the total docs. Docs is actually, again, a, a naming issue in uh, Apache Pino. Docs is actually events which you have inside of uh, Pino. So whenever I run the query here, we have some more data, right? So every five seconds, because that's, that's the flush time. I have in Telegraph, so we have every time some more data, okay? That's, and that's in Telegraph, that's not Pino. That's yes, how that's, numbers. exactly, that's Telegraph, which is outputting every five seconds. Definitely not Pino, which is ingesting in real time. Um, yeah, that's almost as real time as I can get. Um, okay, uh, furthermore, as you can see here, that's what Tim spoke of before, the use V2 engine. If I turn this on, I think, um, yeah, it, it takes time. Okay, so you get this. Using V2 stage, um, well, this idea is experimental. I can tell you, uh, I've, um, so if you want to do joins, you need this. I used it on the JSON index, something didn't work. I actually worked with the open source Slack channel. There is also the Star Tree Slack channel. There's also the Apache Pino Slack channel. I uh, entered the bug there. It was fixed within two days. Okay, it was really incredible. Okay, so and I, I posted it on Twitter as well. This is customer service without being a customer even at its finest. Okay, great. We have Apache Pino, we have real time ingestion. Cool stuff. Let's go and try and see this stuff in superset, right? That's what we, at the end, we want to see the graphs, right? That's what we're interested in. Uh, with all the respect and the beautiful UI we get from Pino, that's not what the user is going to look at. Okay, so let's go and do the final step. Um, so as you can see, I have even more data which I can uh, create tables, schemas and tables for. I'm not going to do that now. Let's go to uh, superset and we're going to add Pino. Okay. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky because I don't know superset too much, but um, bear with me. So we're going to add a data set. Uh, Let's add connect database. Okay, first we have to connect to it. And as you can see, Apache Pinot is not there. 
but SuperSet, they're really, really friendly. So they said, okay, choose from a list of other databases we support. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Okay, here we go, Apache Pinot. Great, as you can see, that, that loads. Okay, now I need to give the SQL Alchemy URI. And this only works because when running SuperSet, I added the Apache Pinot driver, right? You've seen that, I've shown you. Very important step, otherwise it just won't work. So let's test the connection. Ah, and connection looks good. Again, great, thank you. Gods of demo have mercy on me at the moment. Okay, so we are connected. We just connected SuperSet to Apache Pinot. Great, now let's try and uh, do something with that. So how about um, saved queries? I don't have any saved queries, but um, let's go and try and uh, run a query. And that would be in SQL lab, okay? So this is already, uh, with all due respect to Apache Pinot, this is a bit nicer than Apache Pinot. So let's run a query. Say it ain't so. <laughs> Say it ain't so, but it is. It is actually so. So I can run this and I get the data. Okay, beautiful stuff. This is, I'm using some average. Uh, oh, sorry, it's definitely uh, too small. Okay, so I'm running a very simple query. I'm using the Pinot database uh, schema, by the way, the, the default, the schema, by the way, this is the tenant, if I'm not mistaken. And set C table schema. Okay, great. I can actually see. This is, this is some great interaction between Superset and Pinot, right? This, this is really incredible stuff. Um, this, is, uh, this is thanks to Apache Superset. They're doing great jobs with many databases and also uh, working with Apache Pinot. I guess there is some interaction between uh, both of those uh, projects. Okay, great, we can run SQL queries. Let's see some charts, right? Okay, now. First, we have to create a data set. So we're gonna go um, add a data set. Great, okay, that's where it gets trickier. Um, data, create data set. Oh, beautiful. That's a first. Let's see what happened. Yeah, the port forwarding just died, I think. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go back to this and we're going to try to do a create data set. And here we go. So again, we're choosing Apache Pinot as a database and we're choosing the default tenant. This is the tenant and the host metric CPU. Okay. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so I know where I'm at. Now create data set and create chart. Great. So first of all, no. I just want to create the data set because there is a certain change. I haven't figured out how to do that straight away, but there is a certain change which needs to be done on that data set. Okay, I went to data sets. I can see my data set. I need to go and edit something. If you go into the edit data set, if we look at all the columns, see the timestamp is just a long, and SuperSet needs a timestamp for charting purposes, right? You need one. So we need to define this as a default time, date time set. So let's do this. And we need to define it also. Uh, you need to work a little bit more on Apache Superset. We need to give the date time format. And the date time format is, um, just a second, this is in Epoch milliseconds. Okay? Great. Great. That's all we needed to do. So now our data set is ready. By the way, I could go in there and I can change even more stuff. So we have calculated columns, but everything is actually a dimension, but that's not true, right? I mean, all of this, they're definitely filterable, but they're not dimensions. They're actually metrics. So I want to take this down, and this is not a dimension. Uh, no. no. Okay, great. So our data set is ready. Now let's create the chart. Charts, create 
create a chart, I'm going to use the E charts, I'm going to use the time series line chart. You can choose whichever you want. Um, here we have to choose our data set, right? This is the name of the data set. So let's create our chart. And we get this beautiful picture. So I have the time column. Because I already created the time column in the data set, right? Uh, that's why it knows how to pick that. If you have multiple time columns, then you will have to pick and choose. Uh, if, you, if I didn't do this change in the data set, this wouldn't work. You can, in superset, you can create or use a, only a defined timestamp column as a time column, of course. Uh, time granularity, um, let's have it in seconds. Um, time range, we'll talk about, it. okay, time range, let's do, uh, in, let's do advanced, and we'll do a last 10 minutes, okay? And uh, which metric do we want to see? Let's go and uh, use the, uh, I don't know, usage user. That's actually not a metric. Ah, uh, it is, it is, sorry, okay. Um, aggregate, I would like to see it as an average, right? No need to see it as a sum. And as dimension, I want to see um, the host. And that's it. Mm. Now I have the average of the usage user. And uh, based actually, uh, here's the time on the bottom. And we have it. So I can actually save this chart name. Um, whatever, add to dashboard, I don't have a dashboard yet, but okay. And then afterwards I can go and I, say, I can uh, show it, okay, uh, where is that? So let's go and find the dashboards. So as you can see, I don't have a dashboard. But let's try and create a dashboard and see this being updated every second. So let's create a dash, ah, here it is. So I can, oh no, that's not what I wanted. Um, let's create a dashboard. Um, untitled dashboard. This is a dashboard super cool, right? And I want to see this and then we can go here and save this to my new super cool dashboard. Here we go. Let's refresh this. Here we go. So this is my dashboard now. I can make this bigger. Let's save this. And then I can go and set all the refresh interval every 10 seconds. And that's what I wanted to show you. So now we have a Apache superset, almost real time graphs, right? Working together with Apache Pinot, real time adjusting from Kafka. Kafka getting all the information from my computer. Um, uh, usually at this stage, if we have more time, then um, uh, I invite other people to run tele Telegraph and we could see all of this um, on the screen. Uh, but uh, we actually run, running out of time. So thank you very much for joining. I hope this is helpful for you. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me. Um, you are Nodman, you can follow me on Twitter. You can uh, look me up on LinkedIn. Um, whatever you want, available to uh, whatever you need. Thank you very much. Thank you.